Welcome to the Your Fitness Chick podcast. I'm Abby, your fitness chick, and I'm super excited to have my guest on the show today, Wendy Rose. I think that you guys are going to be super excited with her story. I know that she's an inspiration for me. She's a friend of mine. I follow her on Facebook and she's always uploading tons of positivity and inspiration. So I instantly thought of her when I was making my database for guests for the show. And I'm so glad that she agreed to be with me. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here, Abby. I love what you're doing. Oh, awesome. 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 Well, thank you for that. Um, Well, Wendy was nice enough to write up a really nice bio about her because obviously when we're telling stories about people, we kind of want to know what their story is. um, And that way we can get a better grasp and understanding of why it is such a cool story. So I'm just going to read this little tidbit about you, Wendy. So Wendy is committed to health and fitness and focused on longevity. She was on a diet roller coaster like a lot of us have been for years before figuring out there was no weight loss secret just good, clean nutrition. In her mid-40s, she started running thanks to peer pressure of friends, eventually becoming an endurance endurance athlete, running ultra marathons and competing in triathlons for the past eight years for the past eight years. When Wendy turned 50, she realized the negative self-talk she battled almost daily had stopped and she credits her personal fitness accomplishments with telling that voice inside her head to shut up. Wendy incorporates strength training into her weekly schedule and says she views all of her fitness activities as a form of play, which helped make them a lifestyle. It also is what keeps her feeling young and young at heart. And definitely you look young, girl. So (laughs) I think that's a really great bio. So I wanted, I I was sharing with Wendy right before we started the podcast that ironically, I was just walking my dogs before coming in to start the show. And I had my phone and I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw this post somebody had post posted that says, stop saying just a half, a half marathon, you guys, just so you know, if you're new to marathons and all triathlons, and all that, like I am, I want you to grasp this concept before Wendy dives in and expands on it. A half marathon is 13.1 miles which is 23,056 yards, 26,200 steps, 69,168 feet, and 830,016 inches. Amazing. It makes me want to throw up. (laughs) Just thinking. (laughs) Me too when I hear it that way. Because I am not, I am not a runner. Now I have myself found I do like to jog and do high intensity interval training and stuff like that. But I have always had the highest amount of respect for people who are runners because man, that takes a real special mindset in my opinion. And you have taken it even a step further and launched yourself into this world of half marathons, fast forwarding to ultra marathons, triathlons and all that good stuff. So I want to kind of start, at the very beginning. So you said you've been doing this for about eight years, right? Yeah. Most for the most part. Yeah. So tell me, first of all, what, what, when you were struggling with your weight loss roller coaster and where, what, what was your turning point and how did you end up where you are right now? Um, actually I had, I have a specific, specific memory. I was working at the home shopping network at the time And I got up from my desk one day and my belly jiggled. (laughs) Hate the belly jiggle. I I knew, you know, I didn't look the way I wanted to look, but that was kind of a, oh my goodness. And um, I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was eating all the right stuff. And um, I actually went to Weight Watchers at the time. How old were you at that point, Wendy? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was... mm, Late 30s, okay. mid to late 30s. Okay. So um, coming into I, menopause time. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, it was mostly because I had an addiction to pasta, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, Weight Watchers really taught me the things um, that I didn't know. It taught me portion control. It, tell, it helped me make better choices. Okay. Um, so really, I, I, you know, lost my weight. And for the most part, 
maintained it since then. I did have a little blip um, a few years ago, but then changed my diet, mostly went whole food plant-based, and then I've been able to maintain without counting calories and doing all that difficult stuff that makes it extra hard. Yeah. So just really, it was a transitional lifestyle change for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I learned so much and that really helped, really helped a, a lot because I knew diets are not the way to go because that's a temporary fix. Right. Um, some diets are worse than others because they don't teach you anything. So you're just going to be back uh, where you were. And a lot of the diets and, and programs out there want to charge people a fortune and that's, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to last. It's not going to really have the benefit that a lot of things people do. So, right. So, um, so yeah, that was it for me. So once you had decided that you didn't want the belly jiggle and you transitioned your nutrition and changed the way that you were eating, when did you wake up and decide that, okay, I want to start running? Um, I want to say it was 10 years ago. Yeah, about, well, 10, 13 years ago, um, Disney was doing an inaugural wine and dine half marathon. It's a, it's a race at night. And I had several girlfriends all over the country and they said, let's do this as a way to get back together. So we all started our own little training plans and we all met at Disney to do this. And I wasn't even running the half marathon because through my training, I knew there was no way. I was doing a couch to 5K, um, basically could barely run to the end of my street. Um, so I did a relay half with another girl who I didn't even know from New York and New Jersey. Um, but after that experience, um, some friends who I worked with at the time were like, hey, we run on these nights, you know, do you want to come after work? And so it just became this positive peer pressure is what I call it. <laughs> and it becomes a social thing, you know, and that's how I have this just great group of people who are always there doing something and, uh, and, you know, suggesting different new and different ideas uh, for fitness. But yeah, it became just a, a more of a social thing for me than anything else. So when you just start, you're probably a little deconditioned, right? Your endurance level oh, obviously has a long way to, to go into growth. Um, yes. Where, I mean, for the listener on the end, listening and thinking about this, like this has always been on their bucket list. Mm -hmm. How, like, how did you start as far as, yeah, you were with friends, but like, how, how far did you go? Did you just go for like a certain amount of time or did you track it for a certain amount of distance? Like, how did you just start in that regard? I will say, and I recommend this to anyone, if you want to start running. And trust me, I understand most people don't want to run. So find what it is that you want to do that you'll enjoy. Um, I didn't enjoy running for many years because I was doing it all wrong. Um, but I found the most popular is a couch to 5K program. And it'll give you baby steps. Um, it'll basically be like, you know, run from this light pole to the next light pole and then take a walk break. And it really helps you build up gradually. So if people want to start running, that's a great way to do it. And we live in a part of Florida that has so many 5Ks all the time. There's something to do to keep you motivated if you need to sign up for things to, to have a goal to work toward. Um, but that's really how I got started. Okay. So you kind of set small goals. Right. Absolutely. And then they got, as you improved on your endurance, you set that, that bar a little bit higher each time. Yeah. Now you said when yes. you first started, you were doing everything wrong. Like, what do you mean by wrong? I didn't understand the importance of, you know, the right running shoes, nutrition, um, that you don't just run fast all the time. You know, you wear yourself out and then can't breathe and then you, you hate it. And it's this vicious, vicious cycle. I didn't realize how important it was to build up and build your endurance and build your lung capacity, that type of thing. Okay. And definitely the fuel and the gear count Absolutely. big time. What's your, Absolutely. what's your favorite running shoe or what gear do you recommend for people? I've been in Hoka's cause I need a lot of cushioning. And so I've run in Hoka's for many years now um, I'm considering a couple other brands, but like what, 
when it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'll, I'm 56 now. I'll say it out loud. Um, and I need a lot of heel cushioning, um, just because everything's, you know, I don't want to say wearing down, but just a little more sore than I used to be, uh, when I run. Right. But there's a lot of pounding involved. Sure. Obviously, especially for that long of a distance. So you started running with your friends, you set small goals, you learned what you were doing wrong, you corrected that, got the nutrition in, got the right shoes and all that good stuff. So how much time had transpired before you decided, uh, I'm going to go a little bit further than Disney? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it was a few years. Um, but then I, again, I have friends who sign up for crazy things. <laughs> Um, and I think the next big thing we did, you know, it sounds like fun. Um, was, it, it's called a, a Ragnar. It's a road race. Okay. And we, uh, you get a group of, I think it's 12 people in two vans. Um, and we ran from Miami to Key West. So it's like 200 miles. And there's always a runner on the road doing different legs. So like wow. runner one would go and then you would drive to where they're finished and runner two would go again, craziness. But this is what motivates me is fun and experiences that make me feel alive. Wow. Um, so I'm usually up for anything once. So um, <laughs> that was, that was my first crazy thing. And I think that's before I even got into triathlon. So yeah. Um, again, just a really neat challenge. I think you end up individually running 13 to 15 miles, something like that. So equivalent you know, in, to like a half marathon. Exactly. In like, you know, three different legs or whatever. Um, but again, unique challenges that sounded like fun at the time. <laughs> Till you're until you're in it. It's kinda like when you start putting up Christmas it's when you start putting up your Christmas decorations, right? You're like, This is yeah. so fun and then halfway through you're yeah. like, Why am I doing this? Exactly. But yeah. on a much more intense physical level, obviously. So when did you start doing so you went from Disney to that to the Key West Miami experience? When did you start doing triathlons? Because that's a whole nother <laughs> animal. Yeah. And it's funny. Um, it was, I want to say eight years ago. I want to say it was about eight years ago. So probably three, four, five years into running. A lot of my friends were doing triathlon and it's, I've been a swimmer all my life, <coughs> but we live on the Gulf of Mexico and there's something in there called sharks. So <laughs> I, even if it's 95 degrees out and I'm on the beach with my friends, I'll go up to my knees and like splash to cool off. So I was trying to find what's called a duathlon. It's like a run and a bike and you don't swim. Um, but they were really hard to find. So I, I did a couple of those and was just like, I'm going to have to start swimming too. And literally took the plunge and started doing that. But again, it's the positive peer pressure of things my friends were doing and it looked really fun. And that's how I got started doing that too. Wow. So yeah, that would, I imagine, can imagine take quite a bit of preparation and training because you've got mm -hmm. to have your running game on, you've got to have the swimming, you've got to obviously have yeah. the biking. So yeah. when do you find time in your schedule to get your training in? Yeah. Um, it all depends. I've had different jobs during this time. Um, so it all depends. Sometimes it would be in the morning. Sometimes it would be after work. Um, but yeah, you, you figure out how to make it work. And how, how much, how much time per day? Like if you know you're, yeah. you're doing a triathlon, let's say 30 days out, how much time per day do you need to allot in order to mm -hmm. be ready to go? It depends. Cause mostly I was doing the shorter races, which are called sprint triathlons. Um, so I mean, really a, an hour a day, just like if you were going to the gym, um, an hour a day, probably five days a week. And that's, um, that's, uh, for conditioning of all three of those things, biking, swimming, and running. You might do different things on different days. Or like if I had a gym day, I'd also either swim or bike or something like that. You kind of mix it up. Um, but 
I've always had a really good coach that really tailors it for people who are living life, raising kids, doing all the things. It's just how, how you can best fit it into your life. Wow. So if, if somebody say me, you know, cause it's something I, I may dive into. I don't know. Um, if I wanted to get started, where would I start? Would I just start jogging? Would you rec- like, let's say I wanted to do a triathlon. Would, mm-hmm. would I feed one shark before the other? Would I start running first, get the endurance up that way? Would I bike first? Would I try to just dive in and practice all three? Like, where would you, where would you say would be the best way to do it? That's a great question. Um, Cause I really don't, I don't know that there's one path for everybody. I think it's all individualized. So maybe, you know, figure out what your strength in the three disciplines is and then um, add in the next one uh, and then add in something else. Um, obviously running seems to be the easiest because it's, you need tennis shoes and that's about it. Right. Um, so getting a, a, it's funny, my first couple of triathlons, my, I had a, just a regular bike didn't realize how harder that made it for me. Um, cause I didn't know, mm. um, didn't even really know how to shift gears correctly, you know? Yeah, so, I would have no clue. <laughs> right. And I didn't ask the right questions. That's the biggest thing I think about life in general is when you learn how to ask the right questions, you know, things get easier, but sometimes we feel like we have to know the answers already. Um, so we don't humble ourselves enough to go, Hey, I have no idea what I'm doing. Give me some direction. (laughs) But that's the other cool thing is there's so many in, in different communities. Like we have, um, my triathlon club is the Sarasota storm triathlon club. My running club is the Minnesota track club. There are clubs all over the country, no matter where you are. Um, that if you want to get started, they're so welcoming now there's elite clubs for the best of the best. I've never been those athletes. Um, I've always been just the person coming off the couch doing the thing. Um, and people are just really welcoming and want to help. Also, if you just want to start swimming, there are masters club, anyone over 18. So don't feel like you're the old person masters <laughs> swimming all over the country. Um, it's for anyone over 18 who wants to start swimming. Um, like, to get good or faster, not just, you know, go do laps in a pool, but to really train. Um, so it's accessible. It's so accessible. It's just, again, people don't know to ask. Um, so there's help too, free help or, you know, nominal to, to get in the pool every, you know, two or three times a week or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'd say work on, first of all, the thing you like the most, and then the next, the next best thing. And then, put in whatever you think is going to be the hardest. Um, But there's also some, like, they call them um, just kind of beginner or fun triathlons. Um, We used to have one locally that we don't have right now, but you would swim in a pool at the Y. No sharks are there. (laughs) What? No sharks are there. (laughs) No, exactly. Thank goodness. I wish there are actually some professional triathlons that have a pool. And I'm like, I want to do one of those. Yeah. And uh, because then, you know, you're not hyperventilating about what's swimming or splashing around you. Um, No, but there are some just to get people literally get get your feet wet. You could swim in the pool and then you do a real short bike and then you do like a one mile run. So it's just to introduce you to the concept of what a, a triathlon might feel like. And I know some people who went from that to an Ironman, which is you know, 156 miles or whatever craziness. Can't even imagine. Um, but I have lots of friends like that. So wow. anyway, but there's always some way to get you started if you even want to try. That's the cool part um, that there's programs to help you. Yeah, that's some great information. Thanks for sharing that. I'm sure people find that helpful. So I wanted to ask you too. So in your bio, you talked about how you also make time for strength training, which, you know, that's my mm-hmm. my thing. So yeah. Do you feel like that definitely impacts your performance when you're doing these triathlons? Absolutely. And my strength training, especially during racing season, it's um, functional fitness. So my strength is focused on swimming and biking and running. So a lot of upper back and arms and 
um, power moves, not just, you know, doing a lot of squats or things that are actually going to make it harder for me to recover to do the next training thing. Um, so it's very specialized moves to strengthen the muscles I need to do swimming, biking, and running. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, sense to you. So, yeah. For sure. That would make a difference. Definitely. So, you know, oh, I'm always absolutely. preaching about the importance of strength training and it affects mm -hmm. everything in your life. So that's awesome. So and there's more, obviously something I know that's important to you too. And there's more and more evidence that especially we as women, once we're in our forties, even earlier, I would start if you can, we need to continue strength training for longevity, for, you know, bone metabolism bone. for bone structure, yeah. you know? So if we want stronger bones, if we want to live well as we age, strength training is so important. And I know you know that for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 100%. So because I do follow you on Facebook, it seems like you're doing half marathons or triathlons like every weekend. Like how many, how many do you do per year? Um, yeah, I get accused of that a lot. Um, <laughs> it seems like you're always <laughs> laying out your cute little, uh, my, my flat Wendy gear. Yeah. yeah. No. And, and it's really not a lot like this year because I've had a very difficult year. Um, I did two triathlons this year and then really needed to shift my focus just to running. Cause I needed, I needed to give myself softness and gentleness in the rest of my life. Um, so I was able to do that. But I, I mean, if you're doing 5Ks, I work on Saturdays, so I can't run a lot of local races because mostly they're on Saturday. So I don't compete even remotely as often as a lot of people do. Um, so I'll probably have a good, I want to say five or six races, a good serious races every year. Um, it may be more than that. This year, definitely not. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's part of life for me. So it has to work with my life and whatever's going on in my life as well. So, so this year is probably more five or six serious races. Um, I did get the opportunity to go out and do some things in the mountains earlier this year. Again, big groups of people and lots of fun life experience stuff. Um, so I've made sure to do what nurtures me as well as what pushes me. And that's very cool because it sounds like too, for people, you know, that are single, uh, in forties and fifties, the midlifers who are maybe, yeah. Newly single. Yeah. Right. Here we are. And recreating <laughs> the next chapter in your life that yeah. this sounds like it could give you a lot of networking and social opportunities just to meet new people and maybe help you ride that ride as you're transitioning to that next chapter. Right. Exactly. Again, for me, fitness is, it's funny. I, I really enjoy training a lot of times by myself because I'm in my mind. That started because I was always the slowest. So among my friends, we'd meet up to train and they'd like take off. Now that's <laughs> changed, which is nice, but I respect that for other people. So a lot of my training is solo, um, but a lot of my races and competing is social. So it's, it's kind of an interesting balance, but yeah, I am so propelled by other people. Um, and it's funny, I never watched a half marathon until one time I volunteered to cheer at one and I never saw the front of the pack cause I was never up there. I'd see them take off at the starting line, but I never saw them compete. I've never seen the end of the pack. You know, the people who they just want to walk the thing or, you know, this is them getting back after knee replacement or something else or whatever it is in their journey. But to see all types of competitors in one race, it was really mind blowing for me. And it helped me respect the sport even more to see that it welcomes all types, which is what I love about the communities that I um, compete in, because it is it's for everybody. And everybody has to start somewhere. Right. Exactly. I mean, at one point well, you that, were a beginner. Exactly. And I trust me, it's funny because a lot of people are slowing down as they age naturally. That makes sense. 
But because I started so slow and I would take a lot of walk breaks and I really didn't push myself when I really started, that I'm getting faster right now. So right now is a fun time for me because I keep, you know, surprising myself. Like yesterday we did a five miler. That's an annual event out on KCP. And I ran my fastest time ever. And I'm not in my top That's condition awesome. right now. So I was really, really excited about it. As but, you should um, be. Yeah. Congrats. Everyone That's has awesome. to start somewhere. Thank you. And that's the other reason, like, I, again, I continue to surprise myself with different things because I've never, I've never ran in my life till I was, you know, 43. Um, I've never been athletic. I was the dancer. I was not, you know, the athlete. So to see myself doing some of these, th these things, I still you know, cry happy tears, not because I've done anything amazing or, you know, top of the pack, you know, on the podium, whatever. Um, it's because I didn't think I could do any of this stuff. And so that's what I love about the things I do. If I can do it, anyone can do it. That's how I feel because I never did any of these things. So even with my little accomplishments, it's a lot to propel me. Like you read in my bio, I used to have so much negative self-talk in my head, you know, or like my alarm would go off. Why are you getting up to train? You, you suck or you're slow or you're never going to do those things that everybody else is doing. And then eventually that was gone because I proved to myself without knowing it that I can do more and I can push myself. And that was, it was a really cool moment for me because I know we all battle negative self-talk in some way. For sure. And when you realize that voice is gone and you did something about that, it's pretty cool. It's liberating. It's freedom, really. It is. It's absolute freedom. That's it. Because doing that stinking thinking, it is, oh. it's the chains. It is. And yeah. even I, you know, it's very rare because I've practiced yes. very much so breaking mm -hmm. that chain. And so, um, there was somebody that I used to read a lot of her books. Her name's Doreen Virtue. And she always said, whenever you catch yourself thinking about something negative about yourself, yeah. you do, you say cancel, clear, delete. So oh, you, I like that. you cancel the thought, you clear it, you delete it, and then you replace it with what you want it to say. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to share this is because uh, last Sunday was my birthday. And I was blessed because my son's 23 now. And when you know all those people out there who have sons and daughters in their 20s or stepdaughters and sons in their 20s, you know, you don't you don't rank up high on the totem pole for visitation. <laughs> right. So since it was my birthday, he had to come see me. And what was really neat was I can't even remember what we were talking about specifically, but I had said something and he go and he goes, cancel, clear, delete. Because <gasps> I used to tell him that same thing. It mm -hmm. just brings tears to my eyes because I always had told him the best person that is going to always be there for you besides your mom is yourself. It's you. And That's once it. you realize that, you've got to talk to yourself like you would your best friend. You know, yeah. you would never say you suck to your best friend, even if you thought it. <laughs> you wouldn't, yeah, you right. wouldn't say it, right? You would encourage yeah. them. And I think that's such a great point, Wendy. That is. It really that's is. Awesome. So who would you say has been the most influential person? Not necessarily for racing and running mm -hmm. and all these great things that you've been doing, but... In your lifetime, who do you think has been the most influential person in your life and why? I honestly don't know if I could pick one person. Um, and that's kind of how I've lived my life for the past like three years. I just really open myself up to different voices, different influences, um, which has helped me with my personal growth. But we can learn something from everybody. And it doesn't have to be an athlete or a runner or anyone that does the same. And that's actually better if we li listen to voices outside of our funnel. Um, I will tell you, I am addicted to Rich Roll's podcast. Um, oh, he is he's awesome. Um, he's an endurance athlete, but he's also someone who's been in recovery for many years. And he's really cute. And 
and he's really <laughs> cute. And his, his life lessons, his guests, and because I have a background in journalism, how he a asks questions and just reflects back to how, whoever he, he's interviewing. It, to me, it's like the best single source of information for life. Yeah. Um, so his podcast can be long. So it's usually I listen over a couple days or three days. Um, but honestly, he has introduced me to so many people who've helped in influence my stage of life right now. I think that's the best way for me to put it. And I love that. Yeah. I mean, definitely always keeping those eyes wide open, those ears open. Yes. For the good and the bad, leave the bad, take the good, and then just make it mm -hmm. into your own and mold it so that you can use it and become better. Yeah. So as we're wrapping up here, uh, I want to ask you, what do you do and what is your advice to people on the days you wake up and you don't feel like doing it? What do you do? Yeah. It all depends. Um, some days, especially this year, I've needed softness and comfort. And so I stay in bed instead of getting up to work out, but work out in the afternoon or evening instead. Okay. Um, some days it, you just have to miss. But my goal is always to push myself because you will always feel better after, even if the motivation isn't there at that time. If you feel physically like you can't do it, that's something different. Like if you're sick or um, something. Because obviously we have to listen to our bodies. Um, but at the same time, just push yourself a little bit because you will never regret a good workout ever, no matter what it is you're doing. Even if, okay, I can't feel up to running today, but I can do a good walk. Walking is movement. Walking is still something. Um, so whatever it is, like I have an aversion to the swimming pool lately. <laughs> I need to get back in and get started again. So what do you do? You just go. And even if you have to be the girl in the slow lane, just go and give yourself that gentleness to get back at it. Um, life gets in the way. I absolutely understand that. And I've been a living example of that. But we deserve it. Um, it's self-care. It is not selfishness, despite what some people in your circle may tell you. It's self-care to be a healthier, stronger, um, you know, person. And that anything I've ever done in regard to fitness, it affects my mind. It affects my heart. It affects my body as well. So... I am the first person to really be a prom proponent for whatever it is you choose to do. It is self-care. 100%. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've always said that sometimes you have to heal from the outside in, right? So when you're going through a tough time in your life, because we're all going to do that, that's inevitable. Um, I just found that if I was having challenges with my mental mindset, with my heart, if you went through a breakup, you know, whatever, like I did last year that can really put you down on your ass. You can either yeah. sit and feel sorry for yourself or you can 